All right, good morning. It's Sunday, first Sunday of the break, and I kind of urged you guys to not work over the break and sort of back that up by saying that I wouldn't be working either, but yet here I am. And what I am doing is getting you some more options for your project. I'm pretty excited about it, so I'm going to be running this kind of from scratch and it may go horribly wrong, but it's live TV, so why not? Anyway, here's Canvas, and I've added a couple of things into the fall project area here. Um, I've given you a, an example for the fast food project, for the weather investigation project, and for writing a survey project. Now, initially, I had resisted doing this because I don't want you to just copy what's here. Uh, most kids do. Uh, but this is supposed to give you an opportunity to be creative and to do your own thing and to put forth your best effort as far as you see it. But, you know, um, <clears throat> it never hurts to have examples here of what an A paper looks like. So um, try to be creative, you know, and try not to just copy somebody else's creativity. So, um, but, so that's available to you. Now the other thing that's available to you is um, I've checked out Minitab and I had initially um, kind of just decided to opt out of Minitab as a possibility because I didn't think that there was a Mac version. But I went back and lo and behold, there's a Mac version in addition to a Windows version. So um, I went through a great long kind of tedious and confusing process to get 30, you know, the files for 30 day trials. And I managed to get them for both Windows and for Mac. So I have them stored on um, Dropbox. So um, if you want to go this route, um, and so let's say you have a PC, just click here and um, you get this kind of weird looking screen, but you can hit this download or you can hit up here to download. If you do, then um, it see uh, the academic setup with um, x64 is the windows and you just go ahead and hit save file and it'll download see it's downloading right here um, i already have it downloaded so i'm not real concerned about it being done but there it is and you'll have a different browser probably but you can just find it in there see i'd already downloaded it and then click it and save it to your desktop or you can just click it from here to install. Um, on the other one, for Mac, it's going to be the same thing. And you can tell it's for you because it has a .pkg. So you hit download and you go through the same process. Okay, so, um, so I want you to see the installation on this because there's no real reason to register it or anything like that. So just going to go ahead and minimize that, get rid of that. All right, so I'm a Windows person. I will not be demonstrating the Mac version because I do not have a Mac. But you know how things install on your computer. I imagine that once it's installed, you know, the various windows that you have to go through, the screens will be somewhat similar. So here we go. Start, start, start. I think I want to install it. All right, so next, setup will help you install Minitab. All right, go ahead and agree. All right, you don't want to activate it with a license because you won't have one. So start the 30-day free trial. And um, to install in the folder, that's fine. Okay, so install, install. It's actually a reasonably quick install. Pretty happy with it. Although, <laughs> having said that, we'll probably sit here for two hours as it struggles to install. And, and we're waiting. And we're waiting. Okay, so um, click finish to exit. There it is. All right, so this is the install file. You can throw that away. Here's the program file. And it's going to open up and um, 
It's going to want your name, your last name, and your email and everything. Why don't we just proceed without registering? And um, we're not going to activate again with a product key. Let's just use the trial version. All right. And help us improve your user experience, share application analytics. Nah. And you have opted out. All right. It should be ready to go. So I'm just going to move this up here so I have a little bit more of a visible workspace. And I'm going to start to enter data. And entering data is a super easy thing. This first little gray area is where you can name your variable. So I am going to name my first variable um, sodium for McDonald's. All right and just go ahead and enter. So um, you're going to enter numbers. Um, I think what I'm going to do is spare you sitting through me entering the numbers. So I think I'll just go ahead and pause. And then once I've entered everything, uh, we can resume. So here's the pause. All right, so I'm back. I went ahead and put in a bunch of stuff. This is for the fast food project, and I'm just going to look at one single variable, sodium for McDonald's. And uh, C2 and C3, this is for the bivariate project for the temperature comparison. So let's just start out with the um, fast food. And it's really kind of amazing how quickly this can work. Uh, if you want, you can just go to stat, basic statistics, and display descriptive statistics. All right, so it's got the three variables. I just want sodium. So highlight that and hit select. And then for statistics, let's go ahead and pick some things that we want. Mean is good. Standard error of the mean, meh. Um, standard deviation variance looks good. Um, minimum, maximum, range. Um, let's see, we're not missing or what uh, non-missing. I don't know what that is, but um, we can just click those off and total and um, yeah so let's look down here first quartile median third quartile interquartile range mode um, anything else that you might want so let's go ahead and hit OK and for graphs yeah you can get all this stuff done sort of at once so um, histogram of data with a normal curve looks good uh, box plot of data looks good so let's hit OK and let's hit OK overall and see what we get. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, here's your summary numbers and here's your graphs. So um, let's scoot this down a little bit if I can. Um, yeah, it's got it. Yeah, there we go. All right. And um, see, these are in fields. So you can just kind of go ahead and let's see what this is. Send to Microsoft Word. Just let's go ahead and copy. And let's just copy as a picture so the formatting doesn't really get wonky. And open up Word. Now, if you guys are working in Google Sheets, um, you're going to have to save the picture and then I think upload it. I'm not a big uh, expert with Google Sheets, but just go ahead and paste. And there it is. You can resize it if you want to. Um, and just, you know, format it whatever way you want. Um, so here it is, here's this. Let's go ahead and copy graph. And um, yeah, everything is set up pretty much exactly the way we want it. So back to Word and we can just go ahead and um, paste that in. It's a little big. Um, you don't need it this big, so size it down. And you can also text wrap and just hit tight and just move it where you want. All right. Um, and you can do that with the other graph here, the box plot. Doesn't look like I have any outliers. Um, I don't think I have any outliers. Um, it's not showing it. But in any event, um, copy graph. And um, you can just go ahead and paste that in wherever you want and resize it. All right, you're going to have to move things around here. But you kind of get the idea. Resize. 
Um, there is another option that you can do here, and it, I was doing it earlier. Let me see if I can remember how to do it. Um, you can go to graph. Uh, you can do the histogram and the box plot separately. Um, let's see, box plot is here. You can do a, a normal probability plot if you want to. All right, so box plot, simple, hit OK, sodium, and select. And um, you can change your labels. You can uh, look at data options. Let's see. I don't think maybe you need this so much. But um, just hit OK. And there it is. You can do that separately. And you can also mouse over it, I think, and see things like that. That's pretty cool. All right. So anyway, there is, there is that. So let me go ahead. I'm trying to think um, basic statistics. Um, let's see what graphical summary is like. All right, so sodium, select, and hit OK. And I think this is probably what you might want to do like just as your default because it does everything all at once. And you can just go ahead and uh, copy graph and um, get it, that into your report. Um, play around with this. This is the greatest software package. It's, um, it was developed at Penn State. Let's see, control V. And um, yeah, this is your one stop right here. And you can resize it and whatever you want to do. All right, and I am a Penn Stater, so I'm pretty proud of it. Although when I read what people say online about it, they're all very <laughs> derisive and dismissive of it. But I think it's pretty cool. You don't actually need the confidence intervals here. Um, you can go back into this, and I think you can actually cut these out. Um, okay, maybe not, but I think in older versions you used to be able to, but that's pretty good stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause, and then we'll bring in the uh, regression stuff. So hang in there. All right, I'm back, and um, I want to sh show you what happens if you just open the program. So you open it up, and it's going to ask you, uh, well, it did earlier. It asked me about, oh, there it is. Um, keep using the trial version and launch it. And um, I did save the data before I started this. So I'm just going to do File, Open, and Project in Minitab. Okay, so there I, I'm just starting with a blank slate here. And so I want to do the bivariate stuff. So let's go ahead and look at um, Stat and Regression and regular regression, and let's do the fit regression. Okay, um, you gotta be kind of careful with this. Um, responses, that's your response variable, so that's the latest in the series, and the predictor is going to be the earlier one, so select that. See, we're using the predictor to generate the response, and let's see what we've got for options. All right, model, uh, nothing here that we need, so cancel that. Um, options, um, nothing that we need here, so cancel that. Coding, stepwise, validation, graphs. Let's see what's under graphs. Um, individual, we don't want a histogram of the residuals. That would be interesting. Normal probability plot, eh, nothing here. All right, so results, let's see what's under there. Um, uh, I don't think we need analysis of variance, um, but let's just leave it in there and see what, what we get. And let's just go ahead and hit OK and see what we get. OK, um, here is the regression equation, useful. Here are, you know, this is A, this is B, and um, we don't need the standard error or anything. We will later on. Um, here is your R squared, and we don't need the predicted or adjusted, just the R squared. From there, you can get the R. Um, we don't need the analysis of variance, so you might be able to just get rid of that. All right, um, fits and diagnostics for unusual observations. Ah, okay, large residual. That may be important. That way, you can identify any res uh, outliers. And that's a pretty good summary right there. 
So let's go ahead and go to graph and scatter plot. And let's see what we get. We need um, with regression. Let's go ahead and do that and hit OK. All right. Um, so let's see. Temperature in 1969 is the X variable. Oops, that's not what I want. So let's see if I can fix that. All right, um, I'm going to cancel that and try again. <laughs> Whoops, this is again live TV. So scatter plot and with regression and OK. So I guess they want the, um, the response variable first. So let's go with that. Select it. That's the Y variable. And then this is the X variable, temperature 1969. Um, you can change your labels. Um, let's see what we have for data options. Yeah, nothing that we need here. So let's see what we get. Ooh, pretty nice, pretty nice. And um, I, that's pretty doable. Um, I'm not sure what we can do with residuals. Let's, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this because I didn't explore this ahead of time. But let me see if we can uh, get a residual plot out of this thing too. Okay, I'm back. I think I figured it out. Um, you go to stat and regression and fitted line plot right here. And um, all right, I've already done this. So just make sure that the response variable is the later of the two years, 2019. And the uh, predictor is the earlier. This is uh, 1969. Uh, we're doing a linear, so leave it there. And for graphs. Okay, residual for plots, we want regular and residuals versus fits, that right there. So go ahead and hit OK and OK. And it should give us both regression line. And this is a, a better one that I might have shown you before. Let me extend this down so you can see it better. All right, so here it is. It's got your R squared. It's got your LSRL. It's got a nice looking um, scatter plot. And it's got the residuals right here. Very, very good. So I think you're good to go. Um, yeah, so you may need to get this installed and watch it again so that you can get this right. But again, once you've got all this, it's all here in little bitty windows that you can go ahead and you know copy and paste into your documents and i think you'll find this to be very very useful and very helpful and very quick so you can spend most of your time with your write-up so on that note i think i'm going to go ahead and say goodbye if you have questions let me know